how is it going? I hope everyone is doing well whenever you see this and tune in day or night. So this is going to be a general reading for water sign Pisces. <laughs> so this is going to be a general reading for Pisces which can cover anything like love, work, friends, family, health, etc. So always take it how it resonates for you if it does. And this reading can also resonate for you even if you're not a sun, rising moon, or Venus Pisces as we all have all 12 zodiac signs throughout our birth chart. <laughs> so Pisces, um, as I was saying, I always encourage everybody, okay Pisces, like I was saying, I always encourage everybody if you haven't already to get your own birth chart to see your other placements, okay? So whether you have your exact birth time or not, you can still get a pretty decent chart online just by Googling it and getting a free chart. So um, for instance, always check your sun, rising, moon, and Venus signs for a complete picture of how um, your readings can come together. So always read your other horoscopes and check my other um, Zodiac ch uh, channel, my other Zodiac readings on my channel. All right, so Pisces, we're gonna get into your reading here in just a moment. I've shuffled all of your cards and pulled your Oracle cards as well, which we will get to at the very end. But first, I wanna start off with a couple astrology notes that's general for everybody during this time period. Okay, so if you've already watched um, some of the other videos for this series, um, I will be providing a timestamp so you can skip ahead to go straight to um, the tarot reading if that's something that you want to do, all right? So, um, starting on July 17th, we have a first quarter moon. And then on July 19th, Vesta, okay, which deals with aspirations, plans, and goals, is going to be entering into air sign Libra, which deals with uh, balance and beauty themes, okay, so that could be a particular note for some of you guys during this time period. And then on July 21st, Venus, which covers love and assets, is going to be entering into earth sign Virgo, which deals with themes of stability, um, grounding, and organization, okay. And then on July 22nd, it will be officially Leo season as the sun enters Leo. On July 23rd, we have the full moon in Aquarius. On July 27th, we have Mercury enters into Leo. So again, Mercury deals with themes of communication, electronics, okay? And it will be entering into uh, fire sign Leo since it will be Leo season at that time. And then on July 28th, Jupiter, which is still in retrograde, will be entering into air sign Aquarius, okay? So Jupiter deals with themes of travel, religion, law, education, and big wealth versus everyday uh, smaller wealth, okay? So that could be a particular. This is like I was saying before about uh, Jupiter retrograde. Not all retrogrades are bad. They get a bad rap. So there could be something that happened um, for you the last time we were in Jupiter retrograde of last year, okay? Maybe when Jupiter retrograde was also in sign Aquarius, there could be similar themes or culmination or things wrapping up um, that maybe started back then, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on July 29th, Mars is going to be entering into Earth sign Virgo. Okay, so into, um, you know, themes of Mars can be passion, creativity, right? But also anger and frustration. Okay, since Mars rules uh, Aries, right? And it's the god, the Greek god of war. Okay, so when those themes come together with uh, Earth sign Virgo, it can could be around more stability around those themes or organization or more grounding, okay? And then the last particular note here we're gonna talk about Pisces is on uh, July 31st, Ceres, which is an asteroid, it's not a planet, right? But it's close enough to us to still affect us here on Earth, okay? It's gonna be entering into air sign Gemini. So Ceres is similar to the Greek goddess demeanor and covers theme of themes of agriculture, gardening, cooking, food, nourishment, nutrition, okay? But also when we talk about the themes of demeanor, we're also gonna be talking about the themes of Persephone, okay? So there could be, for some of you guys, particular themes around grief, uh, grief okay? <laughs> so when Persephone, right, gives up her daughter and she goes into the underworld, she is um, dealing with the grief of her daughter and that's when we have our winter months, okay? So that could be a particular note for some of you guys at this time. 
And Pisces, the last note we're going to talk about is on July 31st, the same day the series is going to be entering into air sign Gemini. Okay. Um, Gemini is the, uh, the ruler, I mean, Mercury rules Gemini. Okay. So Gemini is known for communications, right? So there could be themes around those, there could be <laughs> notes, okay, around the themes of communication with the agriculture, gardening, cooking, food. Nurturing, uh, nurturing energy, nourishment, nutrition, and grief, okay? And then the last note is on the same day, we have a last quarter moon, okay, on July 31st. Now, Pisces, let's go ahead and get into your tarot reading here. I also wanted to say for everybody that is new, okay, welcome. And if you're coming back, of course, welcome back. And thank you so much for your energy, your support in any way. Okay, um, so I always take a picture at the end, one photo of like all the cards that I pulled for you here today, and it will be on my Facebook page, right? So if you want to um, pull that up while you watch or listen, or just take a look at it at a later time in more detail, post up, okay, it will be um, in the description box below with instructions on how to get there if you want to check it out. All right, so the way that I do my readings, we start with the first main six cards in the middle, okay, and then we go on the outside along with the tarot confirmation cards from another deck, and also we talk about what's in the top and the bottom of each deck. It will be in different places um, depending on every reading, and then at the very end, we go over your oracle cards. All right, so let's call out your cards here, please. You have the two of sacred circles in the upright position. The hide is the five of stays, also known as the five of wands in the reverse position. Your fourth card is the eight of cups in reverse. Your fifth card is the three of sacred circles, also known as the three of pentacles upright. And your sixth card is the six of sacred circles or six of pentacles upright. So we'll go over those first main six cards and then go into the rest as it comes up, okay? And also another particular note to keep in mind is the first row is energy starting around July 17th. Okay, it can be a little bit before, a little bit after going through that week and that weekend. And then the second row is kind of the same deal. Okay, so it will be the last week of July and the last weekend of July, a little bit before, a little bit after. <clears throat> also wanted to say that all of the readings that I do are timeless. So for some of you, um, this reading could resonate, you know, six months in the past, six months in the future, year, a year in the past, a year in the future. Okay, days, weeks, hours, minutes, seconds, however you want to take it. Okay, so let's get into your reading here, Pisces. So your first card is the two of sacred circles in the upright position. This is an energy that talks about balancing. Okay, so balancing between the 3D world and the 5D world, okay? So the 3D world would be paying your bills, responsibilities, right? The physical realm, okay? And then the 5D is the spiritual side, the emotional uh, intelligence kind of side there as well, okay? Um, so this energy as well, the way it's depicted in this deck, okay? You see this Native American man and he's calling to the bear spirit, okay? He's calling to the bear spirit to have more courage, to be really strong and powerful, but also to bring in the aspects of hibernation for the winter, for planning for the winter. So that could be something that you or the person you're dealing with or your general environment or situation is kind of at at this time, you know, to start your reading off here with. Actually, before we get into your second card here, Pisces, I do want to kind of go over um, what was on the top and the bottom of one of your other decks here, okay? This is the confirmation cards that I use. It's the Llewellyn deck with the yellow border here, okay? And anytime we talk about what's on the top and the bottom, this is energy from the recent past that is still lingering around or why certain cards have shown up, okay? So what we have is on the top, the chariot in the upright position, and what we have on the bottom is the high priestess, again, that is your card in the tarot deck, in the reverse position. So what this is saying here, Pisces, is that in the recent past, there could have been a lot of poor momentum, uh, controlling of your emotions, right? balancing of your masculine and feminine sides. Again, Pisces, if this isn't you, it could be the person or people you're dealing with or your general environment or situation, right? But when this is co um, you know, coupled together with this high priestess in the reverse, this means that even though all of these positive things were happening, despite that, there could have been something where you didn't feel 
all the way in your power or in your elements, right? Since this is your card, normally the high priestess upright, okay? It could also be that your intuition is off in the recent past regarding a particular situation or just in general here. And this could be why you started off with your first card here, the two of sacred circles, the two of pentacles, where you're really really um, trying to juggle something and you're, and you're looking to invoke this power and this courage, okay, and this planning for the future hibernation of the bear. So I actually wanted to show you, okay, this is your second card in the main six. This is present energy, right? So you, here you are again as the high priestess. This is your uh, tarot card, the Pisces card, okay, in the tarot. You're represented here, and this is always a good luck um, omen when you show up in your own readings, as you often do sometimes, right? Being a very intuitive um, Pisces uh, element, okay? But when you put it together with that past energy we were just talking about, okay, just for instance, so you can see how the two different artists depict the same card in the same position is really um, beautiful and interesting to know, right? But in the recent past, you weren't feeling in your elements or your intuition was off in some way. But then here you are, right, as your second card, you're getting it back. You're starting to feel maybe midweek of the 17th more in your power, more in your elements, and your intuition is back and it's strong again. Now your third card here, Pisces, is the five of states in the reverse position. This is, it's, when it's in this position, it talks about there is somewhere in your life or a person you're dealing with in an environment situation, right, that needs to be taken less seriously. Okay, when this is right side up, the way it's depicted in this deck is you see these four Egyptian men and they're working on some kind of, um, you know, scroll or, or some acro, uh, architecture plan or whatever you want to call it, right? But it's all about pray, playing, taking life not as seriously and practicing and using your support system. So when it showed up for you here, Pisces in the reverse position, this talks about um, you could be not open to that at this time, or you really, really need this, and um, that's why it's showing up in the reverse position, okay? So actually, before we get to your fourth card, I'm gonna go over um, what is on the top and the bottom of your second deck here, okay, to kind of see why this came out in the reverse position. Okay, sorry about that, Pisces. Okay, so again, anytime we talk about what's on the top and the bottom of each deck, this is energy from the past still lingering around or why certain cards have shown up, okay? So in the past here, Pisces, you have the chariot again in the upright position. Okay, that's your second repeating card, right? And then you have the sun in the reverse position at the bottom of your deck. Real quickly, I'm gonna show you again your two cards <laughs> this time um, in the same position here okay so this is both energy from the past repeated and two different uh, depictions from two different artists right so when this happens most tarot decks have one um, have 72 cards okay so that means you have one in 72 chances that it's going to come out again so when it does that's really a particular message from spirit to pay even more uh, close attention than you normally would, okay? So in the recent past, again, you had this forward momentum, the balancing of masculine and feminine energies, positive energy, courage, uh, you know, controlling and channeling your emotion in useful ways. But then despite that, okay, again, you have a blockage or resistance of some type of enlightenment, spiritual download, a revelation, an aha moment, I finally understand, with the sun card in the reverse position. Also resisting um, creativity or passion is not there as much as it normally would be, or also um, useful energy that would help you, you know, otherwise move forward. And that could be why, you know, the sun is in the reverse position here, Pisces, that you had this five of staves or five of wands come out here in the reverse position, all right? But I would say hold on because there's still good cards that are going to come out for you during this reading. Just be patient. As I always say, 
the energy ebbs and flows and we have to take the positive with the negative, right? Such is life, okay? <laughs> so, Pisces, your fourth card is the Eight of Cups in the reverse position. This is an energy of you ready maybe towards that last week of July or even first week of August. You're now ready to take action with something, okay? So when this card is normally right side up, it's walking away from making any decision, whether good or bad decision, right? Or good or bad choice, however you want to call it, okay? This is a very similar energy when it's right side up to the Hermit card about going within and finding your, your own answers and really processing all the information. So when it's in the reverse position, it could be saying that some of you are now ready to take action with something, okay? Um, and I really feel that this action could be what's in your fifth card here, okay? This is the three of sacred circles in the upright position. This is um, really, again, you have the bear spirit, you know, twice in two different cards, okay, in this Native American depiction with the bear right here and also in the drum, okay, the bear and the eagle. So that is, again, slowly stacking your abundance. This is a positive card for momentum, right? Um, but really looking for yourself or the person you're dealing with or general environment situation to see things from a higher perspective like the eagle, but also to have courage and strength and planning for the future. So I really feel like, um, you know, when it's coming together with this eight of cups, it's now you're ready to take action and move forward into this energy, which is really beautiful, Pisces, okay? Now your last card in the main six is the Six of Sacred Circles, or also known as Six of Pentacles Upright. This is a beautiful energy as well of stacking your abundance. What is abundance? It isn't just money or pentacles or sacred circles in this deck, okay? It's whatever you're currently trying to manifest in your life, bring into your life, or get rid of, okay? But this energy also talks about um, giving back to others in some way. It's like a charity aspect. So sometimes when you see this card in other decks, it's a woman um, giving some money to some poor children on the side of the road, okay? Again, it doesn't have to just be money, okay? But it can be you um, giving your time back to help somebody um, in some way, right? Carry some groceries for an older person or spend time with somebody who's lonely or teach someone a skill or a craft or something like that, okay? So this is a very uh, grateful energy as well. And the more that you tell the universe you are grateful for something, it'll bring you more of that. That's you confirming to the universe, yes, I am thankful for this. Yes, I want more of this. Okay, so with all that being said, Pisces, let's get into your tarot confirmation card. So your first one is the Nine of Pentacles in the upright position. Your second is the Seven of Cups upright. And your third is the Seven of Pentacles upright as well. Okay, so we'll go in order here. So your first confirmation card is the Nine of Pentacles in the upright position. And again, um, the confirmation cards, the first two are usually past energy as well. And then the third can be a combination of past and future energies combined. But this is saying in the recent past, um, here at Pisces, there was something where you felt like you had all the tools that you needed, okay, you had a lot of support around you, and your focus, determination, and skill was on point, okay, and you really see that with this falcon on her arm here. This is a beautiful energy, very abundant, right, she's in the field with all her pentacles, there's the, the, the grain, okay, the wheat, right, and so when this uh, nine of pentacles energy comes in here, and it's confirming the two of sacred circles upright or um not or or also, also <laughs> the eight of cups upright okay this is talking about you use this past energy okay if this wasn't you it could have been someone around you helping you or influencing you here pisces you use that nine of pentacles energy to want to be more balanced in your day-to-day -day life with the 3d and the 5d and again call in the bear spirit for more courage, strength, and planning for the future, okay? And then when you put that Nine of Pentacles together with the Eight of Cups in reverse, right? Again, you're ready to um, now take action with something, okay? And you are wanting to bring in the energy of the Nine of Pentacles, of being abundant, of feeling a lot of support, feeling like you have all the tools you need to manifest whatever you currently want to manifest in your life.
All right, and your second confirmation card here, Pisces, is the Seven of Cups in the upright position. This is an energy of having a lot of choices and options, okay? It also kind of has a little bit of Dark Knight of the Soul energy or window shopping for options, not sure what path to take, okay? But really questioning yourself and others and saying, what makes me happy? What fills my cup? What are my priorities, okay? But again, this is past energy here. Now, when it's coming in, it's confirming the High Priestess upright and the Three of Sacred Circles upright, okay? This is basically saying that the way you are able to, or the way you have been in the past, Pisces, been able to make the best decisions, come out of that dark night of the soul energy in the recent past, okay? And make the best choices for yourself and find out what makes you happy and fills your cup, all of those things, was you use your intuition, your inner knowledge, your inner guidance system, okay? And then also here with the Seven of Cups upright with the Three of Sacred Circles is um, the more that you can, you know, really be thankful and grateful for what you have and slowly stack your abundance and say, okay, I may not have everything that I want right now, but I'm going to be more clear about what I want and what I don't want in my life. And then I'm going to move forward and, okay, bring more abundance in the spirit of the bear and, again, the eagle, okay? And then your last confirmation card here, Pisces, is the Seven of Pentacles upright. This is a very beautiful, abundant energy as well, positive energy for momentum. Okay, it's like he's taking a break, right, from looking at his work. He's evaluating himself or others are evaluating him. It can be both or one or the other. Okay, but he's looking at the fruit on the tree that still needs to be plucked and the money that he's already made from the other fruit that he has uh, sold at the market, right? So it's evaluating your, your work ethic in some way. Um, am I working hard enough? Am I overworking? Okay, you, you could be asking yourself that. Um, or, you know, other people could be evaluating yourself in that way. But I really do see it as um, a positive um, card when it's in this position, okay? And it shows a lot of also um, great, great work ethic in general when it's in the right side of position there, okay? So when it's coming in and it's confirming the five of stays in the reverse position and the six of sacred circles in the right side up position, this is saying that the energy, the energy Pisces from that first week that we were talking about here as your third card, where there was some type of blockage where you could have been resisting, relying on your support system, whatever it is to you, friends or family, healthcare, professional, whatever it is or isn't right. Um, but also like that need to take things not as seriously and that practicing and playful energy for the future, right? Saying to yourself, to your friends, oh, what if I did it this way? Or what if I tried this? Or just trying things on in a less serious way um, really will help your evaluation of yourself. Um, again, how much work you need to still do or what you haven't done, okay? And then also with this energy of the Seven of Pentacles upright with the Six of Sacred Circles upright, okay, the more that um, you can give back to others in some way and be in that grateful energy, okay, and feeling abundance, okay, in your life, whatever you're currently trying to manifest or get rid of or vice versa, the more that you can do that and then get into that energy of this. Okay, sorry, Pisces, the camera cut there. But the more that you can get into the energy of the Seven of Pentacles, of evaluating yourself honestly, evaluating others honestly, the more that you can give back to others, become more abundant and move forward in your life in general, okay? So with all that being said here, Pisces, let's get you your quick Oracle cards, Oracle cards so you can be on your way, okay? So let me just grab something here. Your first oracle card from the Rebecca Campbell deck is I Remember, and it says Soul Plan, The Fated Life versus The Destiny Life, okay? And you see this beautiful woman here, and she's sitting in 
um, almost like a bird's nest, okay? And she's in this meditative pose, and there's all this water and energy and space in the background, okay? So this is just a little question, you know, that comes with this card. It's just something to think about, right? It says, what are you being called to do to surrender to your soul's plan, okay? I really feel like this Pisces goes a lot with the Seven of Pentacles upright and also the High Priestess card, right? About your work ethic and what you've done so far and asking yourself, what do you still need to do? What is your soul, your intuition with the High Priestess calling you to do? What makes your soul happy? Okay. And then your second oracle card, your love oracle message, whether you're watching for romantic love or platonic love or self-love or one or the other, all of the above, right? It says, release your ex. The time has come to clear the energy. All right. <laughs> so that could be a particular message for some of you guys at this time. It doesn't necessarily just have to be an ex, but release any old energy that is no longer serving you, that you don't identify anymore, that's um, blocking you in any way, all right? That's what I would say with that one. And then your last oracle message from the animal, um, animal guardians, I can't remember which deck it is, but it's in the description box below. It's the animal oracle cards I use, okay? Um, but it's the Garus, okay? Not the goose, but the Garus, I think I'm saying it right. Uh, it looks like a turkey or goose to me, but anyway, its message is express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing. Okay, so that's really beautiful, and I feel like that's a nice message at any time, right? To use that creative energy as an outlet and really let yourself play and enjoy and relax more. Again, with the five of staves in the reverse position, okay, you're not going to be able to do any drumming and dancing or let that out, that energy out if you're so serious all the time. All right there, Pisces. So that is your message for this time period. Um, thank you guys so much as always for your likes, for your shares, for your subscriptions, for your just your energy and viewing this uh, video as well. I also wanted to say, um, if you like this video and you wanna subscribe, it is free. All you have to do is click in the description box below. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. <laughs> All you have to do is click on the right side where the bell icon is and make sure it's blue and active and then it's free. It'll just notify you when I put out new videos. Um, so anyway, um, thank you guys so much again. I hope you enjoy this period. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys next time. All right.